What up, what up? Wimbush here. I'm going to show you how to bring your VDB files in, render them in Redshift, and then export them out to our compositing program. But in part one, I showed you guys how to, you know, use X particles in Explosia, make our clouds, export those as VDB files. So if you missed how to do that, look in the description, make sure you watch that video first. But if all you want to know is how to bring your VDB files in the Redshift, we're going to start with a blank canvas, go to Redshift, Objects, Redshift Volume, then under our path, we're going to look for where we rendered or cached them out in. So I went to cache and remember we named it Clouds Tutorial. So go to Clouds Tutorial and under there we'll find two folders. But the one we want is the Explosion folder because that's where our VDB files are going to be. So make sure you click on the first one here. Click open. Then under our display, under preview, you want to go to points and make it 100 points. Then under animation, we go to mode, go to simple, and then detect frames. Now when I scroll through our timeline, we'll see our cloud. And remember, we only exported about 30. So in my timeline, I can make this 30 frames. And now every frame has a cloud shape in it. So there we go. But if you um, if you look in our, our render, let me bring up my render view and you hit play, nothing is happening at all. And that's because we have to make a, a volume material. So let's close this down, get a redshift, get a materials, and then at the very bottom, you'll see volume. Now let's click that. And then under our attributes window, I'm not even going to go to the shader graph because all I need is the RS volume here. So let me click this and then the channel if we left click on this little arrow here, you can see we have several different options, but we're using redshift volume. And um, in here, you can either use the density or the heat. I like the way that the heat makes it look, but you can use either or depending on how you want your cloud to look. Well, I'll show you what it looks like with the heat. So we're gonna bring heat into the channel, and then we're gonna take our volume here, bring it over to our, our volume object, and let's hit render again and see what happens. See progressive rendering happening, but nothing showing up in our window. And that's because you need a light source to be able to see this. Now I like using dome lights, but I believe you can use any type of lights when you want to do this, except for the affinity light, I think. But let me get onto the dome light, add that to our scene. And to be able to tell the dome light to see our volume here, you have to go under your volume tab under your dome light and under contribution scale, bring it all the way up to one. Now, if I hit play, we have our, our cloud shape here. And if you really want to get some good detail in there, I suggest using the HDRI file. So let me go over to my, my general tab, click on path. Actually, I just open it up in Adobe bridge. I have all my HDR lights in here. And if you want to follow along, the one that I'm going to use, I found on HDR Haven. I use the site a lot, but the one I'm going to use is the Table Mountain One. Now these are all free and you can download up to 16K. I'm going to use the AK one, but this is a great site to use if you like um, lighting with HDRs. So let me find that one that I was talking about. Let's go down to, there we go. So Table Mountain 1, 8K. And I'm gonna drag and drop that into my path here. And then I'm gonna hit play again. Everything's reprocessing. But as you can see, whenever it's done, now we got some good shading in there as we spin around. And if we don't want to see the background, we want to render with the alpha channel, make sure to click enable background, check that off, and then alpha channel replace, click that on. And that's going to give us the alpha channel in there. Now, here's where the personal preference comes in. If you go back to our redshift volume, all these attributes down here, you can mess with these to kind of get like the, the way that your cloud absorbs the light or scatters the light. 
So if I come, come under scatter coefficient, if I drag this up, you can see it's starting to make our cloud a little bit brighter in here. And drag it down. Actually, let me go to my my render settings, go to Redshift. I'm gonna click off force IPR. I'm gonna bring my samples. Let's bring them up to 64. See if we get a little bit better resolution in here. Here you go, it doesn't look bad. And then under absorption, you can play around with this as well. As you can see, the higher it goes, the less light you'll see on your cloud. And then the lower you go, the more it's going to reflect our light. So you bring it to a good spot where you think it's going to look good. Because remember, in your compositing program, whether you're using After Effects or Nuke, you can tweak the colors even more, which is what I like to do. So it doesn't have to be perfect out of here. I just kind of like finding a good sweet spot. You can also go to your dome light and you can raise the exposure. If you want to add a little bit more light in there, you go under coordinates, you can rotate your light to make the shadows hit it a little bit differently. So I think it looks cool around nine. We go under my red shift here, or my volume, red shift volume. Let's bring this on 2.5 maybe. Yeah, that's not looking so bad. And I know it's not perfectly white, but like I said, we could do that in compositing. In After Effects, we can make it white. Um, we can make it a little bit more fluffy as well. Now, I think we're ready to render this out. So I'm gonna go to my render settings. I'm gonna make my um, sample maxes. I'm gonna just bump these up, 128 for good measure then under my gi i like using the radiance cache and the radiance point cloud and i just found that that usually gives me the best renders for what i'm doing and then um i think we're good to go there make sure under save you click the alpha channel i've done this plenty of times i forgot to click it you you render everything out and there's no alpha channel in there so make sure you click on that and then for format, I like exporting as open EXR at 32 bit. I found that it gives me a little bit more to work with whenever I bring in the After Effects. Everything looks a little bit better when you have it at 30 bits or 32 bits. And then I'm gonna go back to Redshift. I'm just gonna add in a camera, do a standard camera. And there we go. I think we're ready to render it out. And so in part three, I'm gonna show you guys how to bring this in, composite it in After Effects, make it look a little bit more white, a little bit more fluffy, and then you'll be ready to go. And again, I'm gonna have a bunch of free files on my Gumroad channel, so make sure you look in the description, click on that, download the VDB files I rented out, or you can also look at the, the Redshift files that I'm gonna put in there as well as the XParticle files. And then if you use After Effects, make sure you join me for part three, if not, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you click the like button, you know, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be making more videos like this. So it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you on the next video.